born in St Albans, which is a little town um, about 20 miles north of London. I know St Albans. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Roman town and uh, it's got... Uh, it's quaint. It's not too big, not too small. Did you, did you grow up there? Yes. What was it like? It's well, in the country, isn't it? Yeah, it's next to the country. You can get to the country quickly. Um, it's... My parents played a lot of sport, and I didn't like sport, so while I was playing sport, I used to explore some of the derelict houses round about, I remember that, with my neighbours. Um, and I remember we used to go out for hours, and nobody seemed to worry where we were, so that tells you how long ago it was. And did you go to, did you have secondary education there? Did you go to, yeah. to university there as well? Or? No, I went to university in Southampton, first of all. And then a bit later on, I went to university in Bristol. OK, what did you study? In Southampton, I studied politics and sociology. And in Bristol, I studied um, film. Was it the technical side of film or acting? In it front was a of practical the camera course. No, it was, be, it was behind. It was all, well, it was all aspects. It was production, directing um, and technical. Because in those days, people actually shot a film on film like different formats, I remember that. 16 millimetre. And so I learned how to do all of that, which was a, bit, a lot more exciting than typing. <laughs> did that lead to your first job? Yeah, it did, because I, I got a showreel of some stuff that I worked on, and I ended up working for a video company in London for a while. And then I went freelance, so I was a film technician for about 15 years. Wow. And what sort of things did you do in those 15 years? Did you, did you specialise in documentaries or...? I didn't really specialise because I was a technician, so it wasn't... You didn't have to specialise, you just basically worked with people who were doing whatever kind of film. So there was everything from what was affectionately called industrial videos, uh, meaning commercial videos, I suppose, to adverts, to documentaries, mm -hmm. to... TV programmes like Tomorrow's World or but did Horizon. Your, but what did your, as, as a technician, well, I'm not sure what that involves, is that being, is that operating the camera, is that Sometimes. lighting, is that sound? It's not sound, no. Uh, I was a, well, I was basically a camera assistant and a focus puller. So what you had to do is get a list of equipment, mm. make sure the equipment's ready and it's working for a particular job. Um, quite often put it in a van and drive it somewhere <laughs> and unload it all and um, make sure it's all working and all there and set it up for different filming situations which it could be if it was a documentary you could be interviewing somebody or taking pictures images of what was around about or if it was a drama then you'd be in a film set somewhere filming people acting. How did you make the change from, did you go straight from that to teaching or was there something in the middle? Um, well, yeah, the something in the middle was that I had kids. You had kids. And, um, and so basically it was a bit difficult for me to go away because it's very unpredictable. I was always freelance, so mm. it would have been great if I could have carried on doing it. But I was getting a bit old and a bit tired for carrying lots of heavy cameras and heavy it equipment around. It can be quite around. physical. It's yeah. very physical. There weren't many women doing it. I think there was about 2% of women did my job. So, And I just got to the stage where I thought, actually, I'd quite like to know what I'm doing next week or next month. So maybe teaching might be a good option. And how did that combine with moving to Spain? Um, well, it was a bit of a... I trained as a secondary school teacher. Oh, right, um, okay. in the UK. So you can teach UK. in the UK state school system? Um, no, no, I can't. <laughs> Not now, I can't. You didn't do your PGCSE? I did, PG, I did a PGCE, but I had PGCE. a bit of a problem at the end of it because I went off to do a film, so I didn't finish it. <laughs> the, um, I nearly finished it. The bright lights called you. The bright lights called me back again. Um, so... And then, I th and then I thought, oh, why not try and combine teaching? Because I, got, I like teaching with travelling. So that's when I got into the idea of TEFL. And I did a TEFL course. Um, and then shortly after, I think my, when my son was about two and my daughter was five, I got a job in Ecuador 
and we went mm. to Ecuador for a year, which wow. was great. Okay. To Cuenca. So it's so a lovely, a lovely city. Did you know Spanish before you went? No. And you I thought I, I was I was very um, naive. I thought I could learn Spanish quickly. Six months I'd be able to speak Spanish. It honestly it's taken me probably the best part of six years <laughs> to, to be able to Part well, it's, of the problem it's a is, process. It's a process, and part of the problem is being an English teacher and having to teach English, and my husband's English, and so you tend to, that's, your, that's what you speak in. Do you, have Spanish, you do you have Spanish friends? I've got Spanish friends now. Yeah, it's very, very tolerant friends. <laughs> <laughs> How, why Spain? How did you end up here? Well, I always wanted to go to Spain, but I did, thought South America would be a good place to go to first, otherwise I might never get there if I just hung around in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, after Ecuador, we went to Colombia for uh, another year, which was great as well. Had was that back in the days time. when it was safe to be there? Um, it was in between. It was, they had a bit of a hiatus, I think, when um, the, the Uribe, Uribe was president. And he had a big safety drive in the cities, so the cities were relatively safe. We lived in Cali, mm. which is the salsa capital. Um, so it, it was okay, and there was lovely people, and I think when you're not facing danger every day, it kind of just becomes something in the background that you think, you know it's there, but you just carry on and everyone else carries on. Did you so. have kids back then? It was yeah, before yeah. you had kids. Yeah, yeah, because it was after after Ecuador, so we took the kids to wow. Ecuador when they were two and five, and then we went to Colombia the next year. So yeah, we mm -hmm. all went as a family. And why did you choose Valencia? Do you have family here or contacts? No, um, it was sort of, yeah. Somebody said it was a nice place. And we it was a choice between uh, Valencia and San Sebastian. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to San Sebastian, and I really liked it. I thought it was great, but it rained a lot. It does there, yeah. Um, not only that, the cost of living seemed to be really high. Rents were really high. And I thought, I can't actually afford to live here on whatever I'm going to be earning as an English teacher. Yeah. So that made Valencia more attractive. We spent a week here and loved what we saw, we loved. What's been the most difficult thing about making a life here? Many people have said their language, but if you were in mm. Colombia and Ecuador beforehand, you probably pretty much knew Spanish when you... I think arrived. cultural differences. I think I had some fundamental misconceptions about... I thought Spanish people partied all the time and they were really sociable. Um, and I think they are really sociable, but I think they, they are also very a lot more hard-working than the reputation would have us believe. And, and the actually, type. it can be quite difficult to get to know people, especially if you're in a family, because you're very self-contained. Yeah, I've, I've found that. I don't have a family, but I've found that they're not that easy to get, because they can be quite yeah. clicky. What do you miss most about the UK? Um, I think I miss... Um, I, miss the, I think I miss the culture of the UK. I miss people more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I miss certain ways of celebrating. I miss Christmas in the UK. That seems, it's always all the, the do, stuff Do you tend around. to stay here for Christmas? Sometimes. No, I usually go, go back, back because otherwise I miss it. What else do I miss? Is that logical? What else do I miss? I miss shopping. I think shopping in London is yeah. definitely far superior than shopping in Spain. Helpful shop assistants. Um, not just that, <laughs> just better selection of stuff. If you weren't a teacher, what profession would you choose? Or if it, it, would you like to go back into film, or are, are you happy teaching? Well, it's funny, because I, I often, not consciously, but I often dream about being on a film set and some things happening and me having to remember how to load film and things like that. So I think some part of me would like to do something to do with films again. Mm -hmm. um, but if my ideal job, if I could choose a job, I think I'd like to run gastronomic trips around different parts of Spain. Are you sampling. into cooking? I'm into cooking, yeah. Hmm. Um, but I'm probably into eating more than cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sweet things or no, not sweets. Not, not well, sweet 
take them or leave them, really. I do like sweet things, but I don't sort of think, oh, I must have a slice of cake or every, every day, whatever. What's your favourite dish? Oh, that's a good question. I think my, I don't really have a favourite dish, but something that's innovative and fresh and different, you know, made with seasonal ingredients, as long as it's well made and interesting. Do I you tend to have turkey for is. Christmas or because um, no. it's a bit dry? No, dry and boring. Okay. Don't have turkey. Um, Claire, what advice would you give Spanish speakers who are trying to learn English? I would say um, don't just content yourself with having lessons. Um, try and make some English speaking friends or just try and speak some English outside the class with Spanish people who you know can speak English mm-hmm. and do look, switch off the Spanish subtitles, the Spanish dub films and in watch, some, watch some films in original version and try listening to things. There's so many resources you can use mm-hmm. these days. Especially BBC, with the internet. BBC, internet resources, mm-hmm. mansion in Claire's, you know, all these things that you can use. Thanks, so. for, the, thanks for the plug. <laughs> do you listen to podcasts? Um, yes, I do. I, I listen to them in the context of giving people classes more, especially BBC. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you mean you introduce your students to them, so you listen to them to yeah. check them beforehand? Yeah. What sort of things do you recommend? Um, for, well, for economic students, I think there's quite a lot, like Peter Day's business programme. Mm. He's um, good, yeah. He's very good. He makes business interesting. Yes. Um, sometimes they're a bit long, but you know, if you listen to them in small chunks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think things like, um, if you like literature, things like audiobooks and stuff like that, because you can often get fantastic actors. Um, yeah. So reading books that, that are actually really interesting, if you like literature. There's a very good company called audible.com, and it's a, you have to pay, but I think it's a monthly fee. I'm not sure how much it is, but they mm. have wonderful actors reading all the top books and uh, all sorts of science fiction, literature and um, non-fiction, everything. What do you do in your free time when you're not teaching? When I'm not teaching, um, I like to, well, I do like to cook at home. And we always have a sort of fairly traditional uh, Sunday lunch. Roast? Roast. Often. Even roast, in the summer? Roast chicken. Um, if, yeah, pretty much, even in the summer, to be honest. Roast chicken with salad in the summer. <laughs> roast chicken with parsnips and carrots in and the roast winter. roast potatoes in the winter. Or roast lamb or roast something. No, not paella. And not apart, unless I go out for dinner. Apart from cooking, do you have any interest? Apart interests? from cooking, um, I like cycling. Uh, I like going for walks in the mountains or going down the coast and going, finding a nice walk. OK, we move now into the quick fire hot seat in which I ask you some very quick questions. Oh, that's OK. Yeah. Um, tell me what you think. Yes. The quick fire hot seat. What makes you happy? Um, the thought that I haven't got to get up early the next day. Are you a night owl? I would be <laughs> if I had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, with two kids, then it's probably not. What makes you sad? Uh, it makes me sad when people are horrible to each other, or they cross and they don't have to be. Obviously, global disasters make me sad as well, but you know, can't do much about them. Yeah. What one thing, if you were to tell somebody about yourself, would they find it difficult to believe? Nothing. I, mean, I think people are very... Um, they expect the unexpected these days, so I can't really think of anything about me where someone will go, oh, no, I don't believe it. I was really <laughs> impressed about you working in TV because it's something I've always wanted to do. And that question about what profession mm. would you like to do in the last few years, I've, but yeah, I'd really like to learn about film and TV and it will be behind the camera. Yes, so I'm not yeah. surprised when I found that yeah, out about I mean, you. Maybe people might be surprised if I told them certain things that I'd done, places I'd been, or famous people that I'd met, but I think you can be a bit... I met a lot of um, 
sort of slightly lovely media bores when I was working. So I don't, <laughs> the last thing I'd want to be is a media bore who just like goes on about... smoking, intellectual. Goes, no, not intellectual, just goes on Geeks. about the famous people they've met. And, you know, oh, the, right, name droppers. When in, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What one thing would it be most difficult for you to live without? Uh, most not difficult. Not people, a thing. Yeah, a thing. I think, um, I think my bicycle. If I didn't have a bicycle, I would feel very stuck. Do you yeah. cycle to work? Um, no, I don't, unfortunately, just because it's, it's a, a little bit too far and I'd probably turn up rather dishevelled and sweaty. Which famous person, dead or alive, would you like to have dinner with? It's an interesting question. Um, I think Oscar Wilde would make a pretty entertaining dinner partner. He wouldn't be boring, would he? He, said, he certainly wouldn't. He'd be fantastic. And you could just write down all the interesting things that he said and use them in conversation forever. All, all the bon mots. In an ideal world, what would your life be like? In an ideal world? Um, yeah, I quite like my life at the moment. Well, ideal world is oxymoron, isn't it, really? So I, I, I quite like where I am now. I don't spend too much time thinking, oh, if only... I could be here or if only I could be there. I think I've tried to make my if only a reality in my life because I don't want to get to 70 and think if only. Good to hear. Nice. If you could change something about your character, what would you change? Ooh. Uh, well, probably being stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly stubborn, pig-headed in certain situations, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's good to be flexible. But you can work on it, you know. Yeah, work in progress. Exactly. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Oh, if I could travel anywhere. Well, I've been to a lot of places, um, but somewhere I haven't. I haven't been to China, and I think, or Hong Kong, and I think they'd be interesting places to go to. Um, I was lucky enough to teach some Chinese students like this year and last year, last summer, and I started me thinking it would be an amazing place to go and visit. Mm -hmm. So that might be That next, could be a destination list, for yeah. you to go and teach when the kids are a bit yes, older, because yeah. China always needs English teachers. Yes, yeah, they do. They've got some it's very true. poor areas as well. Yes. If you had six thousand euros to spend on yourself, what would you buy? Mm. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure Something if I'd really kitchen. buy anything. No, because I rent my house, and so I wouldn't spend six thousand pounds on the kitchen. Um, I would put six thousand pounds towards a nice little apartment by the seaside somewhere. Um, for I'm not sure where, but. By the seaside, you know, for my mm -hmm. dotage. So it would be a deposit on a house, but in Spain? could be Spain, but it could be somewhere else that had a nice seaside. Okay. Nice seaside, nice restaurant. Yeah, stroll along the Cinema beach. Cinema down the road. <laughs> Claire, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. It was a bit difficult for me to go away because it's very unpredictable. I was always freelance, so. Make sure it's all working and all there and set it up for different filming situations.
Not only that, the cost of living seemed to be really high, rents were really high, and I thought, I can't actually afford to live here on whatever I'm going to be earning as an English teacher. Um, the thought that I haven't got to get up early the next day. Are you a night owl? I would be if I had the chance. <laughs> It makes me sad when people are horrible to each other or they're cross and they don't have to be 